So today we are going to continue talking about the aims of flexion. We are not going to give any new equations or any new method, but we want to solve more problems in order to understand how to determine the deflection in different beams. Question number three is a beam that is subjected to two loads. This is a cantilever beam, and we want to determine how much is the deflection at the right end of this beam. In order to solve this problem, we use a technique that was used in all of these problems that were assigned during this course module. All of these problems are using the same method. And by solving these three problems, I wanted to ensure that we know how this method could be used in different problems. If you have any questions about this after I talked about this method, make sure to ask it because we don't want to move on before you know how to use this method. All right, let me explain that. First of all, I need to find a matching beam on the table. If I go to the table here, there is no matching beam exactly with that configuration of loading. We do have loading at the end of the beam, and we do have loading at the middle of the beam, but not the case that there are two loads opposite direction, and also this force is not exactly at the middle of the beam for the problem that we're talking about, because A and B are not the same. In my case, A is 3 meter, B is 2 meter. So for this force that, are, that is acting at B, I cannot use this equation because that is for the case where the force is exactly at the middle of the beam. So in order to solve this problem, I'm going to split that into two beams like this. The first beam is going to be the beam subjected to a force at the very right end. The deformation at that beam could be determined using this equation because that is a beam subjected to a load at its end. I know the force is upward in that problem, but that would just change the sign. The equation remains unchanged. And because we want to determine the deformation at the very right end, which is the maximum deformation, I can use this maximum deflection directly. So PL cubed divided by 3 EI. So I'm going to plug in the values. L is the entire length of the beam, which is A plus B. After plugging in the values and doing the unit conversion, this is the number that we get as deflection of the beam at the very right end. Okay, now we get to the second beam, which is the tricky part. For the second beam, there is no matching case on the table. But we can determine the deformation at the very right end using the fact that this beam after point B remains as a one straight line because there is no loading acting on that part. So the beam after B is not bending, but it remains as one straight line. So in order to determine the deformation at the very right end, first I determine how much is the deformation at B where this force is acting on. In that case, I cut out the beam after that point, and I would treat this beam as a cantilever beam with the length of A and a force acting at its end. So beam number two is equal to beam number one, but the length is A, not A plus B. So I'm gonna use the same equation, PL cubed divided by three EI, but now length is going to be A, okay? And we can determine how much is the deformation. In addition to that, we need to determine how much is slope of the beam at that point. So a slope could be determined from the slope equation from that table, and we can determine how much is the value of that. All right, now we get to that trick that I mentioned was the intention of solving these problems. In order to determine how much is the deformation at the very right end of this beam, we use this triangle. In this triangle, this length remains as one straight line. So it forms a triangle in which we can determine how much is this dimension, the vertical deflection of the beam at the very right end. So tangent of this angle, tangent of theta B2, is equal to the downward deflection, which I'm going to call that delta prime C2, divided by the length, which is B. So from that, we can determine how much is delta prime C2, knowing the angle and length B. So delta prime C2 is tangent of theta B2 multiplied by B. But there is another thing that could simplify our calculation. We have already seen in the previous lectures that as long as deformations are small, as long as the angles are small, tangent of theta and theta are going to be the same. So instead of tangent of theta, I can simply use theta B2. I'm going to multiply that by B. Theta B2 is already calculated, and we can simplify the equation like this. Okay, I'm going to plug in the values, and we get another deformation for that part. Now, let's calculate the total deformation at the very right end. 
The total deformation is the sum of the deformations in these two cases. So starting from beam number one, the deformation in beam number one is upward with the magnitude of delta C1. For the other beam, beam number two, the beam deflects downward. That gets negative sign. And we can see that deflection has two components, the deformation at B plus the indirect deformation that is caused because of slope of the beam at that point, which we call that delta prime C2. So I'm going to say minus delta B1 plus delta prime C2, which is the deflection of the beam in beam number two. Again, I use negative here because in that case, the beam is deflecting opposite to the first beam. We've got the numbers, plug in the values, and the total deflection at that point will be calculated. Okay, again, I want to highlight here that for this problem, similar to the first problem, and similar to the next problem, we use this triangle in order to determine how much is the indirect deflection at the right end of the beam. Okay, any question for this problem? All right, now I'm going to move on to the second problem, which I said is going to use the same technique. In this problem, again, if we go to the beam's deflection table, there is no matching beam. We do have just one beam subjected to a distributed node of W, but that is the beam where the distributed node is acting on the entire length of the beam. So how can I solve that problem? I saw a great discussion below that problem talking about how to solve that. And those are great recommendations. I actually don't have that much to add on top of those discussions. But I'm going to review that up here. In order to solve this problem, we don't add different loadings together, but we need to subtract different loadings from each other. How? Let's see that here. First, I'm going to consider a beam that is subjected to a distributed load on its entire length, like this one. So this beam is matching the beam that we have seen here, fourth beam on this table. So the maximum deflection at the very right end is determined from this equation, WL to the fourth divided by 8EI. Okay, now we go to the second beam. On a second beam, we are going to use the same technique as we just talked about. In that beam, we need to calculate the indirect deflection at the right end of the beam. Also, calculate how much is the deformation because of that distributed load at B. In order to determine the deformation in that beam, we need to calculate how much is the deformation at point B where the loading ends and also determine the slope of the beam at that point, and then use the same technique that we have learned in order to determine the indirect deflection. Let's determine how much is the deformation at B because of this distributed load. In that case, I can cut out the right part of the beam and ignore that. Then we would have a beam that is having a length of L over 2, and the loading is acting on its entire length. We can determine how much is the deformation here using the same equation that we had in the previous problem. WL to the fourth divided by 8 EI. But the difference would be that in that case, the length is not L. The length is L over 2. So I'm going to say WL over 2 to the fourth divided by 8 EI. And that would be the answer for this. In the same way, we can determine how much the slope of the beam. That would be WL cubed divided by 6 EI. And length is going to be L over 2. All right, now after determining deformation and slope, we can determine how much is the indirect deflection. The indirect deflection using this triangle, which is shown in yellow, tangent of theta b is equal to delta c2 divided by l over 2. In other words, delta c2 is tangent of theta b multiplied by l over 2. And tangent of theta and theta are going to be equal to each other, so this is going to be simplified into this equation. Now, how much would be the total deflection at the right end? In order to get the original loading, I'm going to subtract beam number two from beam number one. So the total deflection at the right end would be delta C1 minus delta B2 plus delta prime C2. And if I plug in the values and simplify that, that would be 41 divided by 384 WL to the fourth divided by E. And that is the final answer for this problem.